Doing the search well can make a big difference um, for the papers that you find and the, the research that you actually come across. So firstly, start with an online database. Um, you can choose more than one. So I'm going to say stick with, you can choose Mendeley, simply because it's the software, um, the, the referencing manager that you're using. You can also go ahead and use Google Scholar. Um, that's a good one, uh, especially for the humanity subjects, the social sciences subjects, Google Scholar I find to be very, very useful for that. Um, and then most importantly, and this was sort of my go-to, I would say, is PubMed. And those should be your go-to online databases uh, for finding really any literature that's out there. Google Scholar is really good for finding literature that's different, so different sources. So for example, finding a book article, um, finding a book chapter, Google Scholar is really good for that. I don't PubMed doesn't really have that kind of stuff on it. So do take a look. What I tend to do is go, go to PubMed, do a bit of a search, then go to Google Scholar, do a bit of a search there, um, and you find slightly different results. So definitely stick to those two when you're searching. What are the key words that someone from your field would jump uh, to when they think about your topic? So what's that keyword? For me, it would be acting. So I'm going to just write that here as that is my keyword. Actin would be my big keyword. And then I'd probably say the next big keyword would be cortex because I'm looking at the actin cortex. And then maybe I'll say my third big word would be the cytoskeleton um, as that's another way that people would describe the actin cortex. So those are my sort of three keywords that I'd search for. And then on top of those words, I'll look at the different proteins that I was looking at. So those would be my other words as well. So what I'd recommend you to do is maybe write down 10 keywords that you think would be um, something that people would look for, uh, would give you the right information for finding out your specific um, review when you're looking for the literature. Write them down, have them at hand, and keep on using those same words to search for your literature. Now, there are three types of keywords that you can go for. First is truncated words. So that might be short words that describe um, your same, uh, the same word that you're looking for. So for example, um, one thing that I used to look for was a, a protein called diaphanous. So people would sometimes look for the truncated word, which in our case would be diaphanous one, or sometimes you might see M dia one as an option as well. And then similar words. Um, so words that might be slightly similar. So for example, like looking at actin, um, sometimes looking for the protein myosin, which is generally they're, they're associated with each other quite a lot. Sometimes if I search for myosin, I'll find papers that are actually quite relevant for actin as well. So what words um, could you use to really select as many papers as possible? And remember, what you're doing is trying to do a really in-depth search for the literature that could be applicable. And you never know, you might find something that you wouldn't have found otherwise by using a similar word or a truncated word. You can then refine your search hits using um, these combinations. Um, so you can use end, so you might want to say, I want to look for a paper that has the word actin and the word, let's say, myosin. Okay, so that's gonna give me papers that have the title of the word actin and myosin in them. So that means I'm gonna look for specifically both of them. You can look for or, so actin or myosin, so look for either one. You can also say not or near, so you might say actin, not myosin, so you don't want a paper that has myosin in it, you only want actin. Or you can say near, so a paper that has actin and myosin nearby. Um, so think about, your search hits and what exactly, you, again, you want to find um, from your literature review. You can further refine using the date published um, and publication type. So the date published, uh, it, it just depends very much on the subject that you're looking at. In the biological sciences, uh, 10 years is a very long time. Three years is probably kind of the gap that you want to look at for the most recent research, um, whereas in maybe the, the, the social sciences or in humanities, 10 years might be pretty recent for you. So think about how early and how kind of how late you want to look at um, in terms of what research that there is out there. And then publication type, so book chapters or journals, um, you can even 
kind of refer, refine those as well to find specific review papers only. Review, review papers really can summarize everything. And what you can do is it's a bit of a shortcut. You can look at that, you can look at a review paper, look at what they've written about, go to the references in that review paper, and then do your own research and kind of write um, and expand on that yourself. So it's a bit of a shortcut because they've kind of done the work for you. They've reviewed that topic for you. It's definitely, it's definitely something you're allowed to do. Um, so maybe you can just uh, initially think about review papers um, rather than looking at um, kind of primary research articles. Um, the date published, again, I think is really important um, as to when you're saying terms like the most recent paper or in a recent study. In a recent study, if, they, if, you, if you reference that as 2000, in the year 2000 in the sciences, that's not very recent. So think about the date published um, and for refining your papers. You can then go in this kind of black hole of snowballing by finding similar articles. So I've taken an example. This is from Google Scholar. So here's a paper um, from 2014 that was published. And you can see these two points here. So you have this here, so you have cited by, and you also have related articles. So those are two um, tabs that you can click on, and they're really, really useful, and I think they're quite underrated. Um, I just kind of stumbled upon it myself when I, when I discovered them. So cited by shows you how many papers have cited this paper. So how many other papers after this one have mentioned and referenced this paper. And in this case, there's 158 that have referenced it since 2014. So can you see how much research that's been done all the time, just in the past um, six years? Whereas related articles shows you articles that may have similar keywords, may have a similar title, may have similar authors. I find that this helps to find the most recent paper. So if you set, click on Cited By, what you'll see is the most recent paper from 2020, 2019, um, that you can see that has referenced this. If they've referenced this, it means that it's somehow related. This is the same thing, but using PubMed. Um, you can see here at the bottom, you have similar articles and cited by. So it works in pretty much exactly the same way as Google Scholar. And while we're here on this page, um, something that I use quite often is the site button over here. So this site button over here, I use this quite a lot um, to generate a reference quite quickly. So if you don't necessarily want to go through the whole referencing system um, and you want to quickly reference a paper, you can just click on that site and then choose the um, style of referencing that you want and copy and paste it. It takes about 10 seconds to do. I use that all the time. Um, you can also favorite a paper as well if you have um, your own PubMed login and then you have all your papers there so you can quickly reference them as you go along. Now at this point you probably have saved, I don't know, hundreds of papers um, and if you've done this really early, if you're doing this in your first year of your PhD or your first year of your master's or even your undergrad, you might have 50 to 100 to 200 papers that you've saved and you want to start to read. But there needs to be a way that you're managing your literature. Um, otherwise, it can get very complicated and very messy and kind of pointless after a while. You've read so many papers, you don't know kind of what each of them have said. You can't really refer to them in the future because you've forgotten which one you referred to. And if you think about it, two or three years in the future, you most likely will forget which papers have said what and what's relevant and what isn't. So one nice thing to do is to use Excel for um, this managing system. Now you want to create a table that looks a little bit like this. Um, and what I've done is I've kind of just added a few kind of key words that I look for when I read a paper. So this is going to be person dependent, project dependent, it really depends on what you're looking for in that paper, what you're trying to pick out when you're reading. So you definitely want the author names, the year, those are kind of, you, can, you could have the title as well. Those are sort of typical things that you want to write down. Um, so I'm going to add the title here because that might be something that you are looking to add. Um, you then want to think about the research question. The research question is something that you want to try to summarize in your own words. What is it that they are looking for in this particular research paper? You then want to look at the methods. So this can all be in bullet points. You don't have to write full sentences. So for example, let's say here in methods, we want to say, right, the method is, um, we can say they used a knockdown system. So I'm just going to write knockdown, KD, like that. I know what that means, and I know they're using a knockdown system. That's enough for me, which is really good. Then the key results. So as you're reading, you can kind of write down what the key results are. Again, just bullet point. They found this protein does this. They found the knockdown does that. Um, and just kind of the key results. If you're looking at hypotheses or discussions, maybe the key discussions. 
and then any notes. So what I tend to write in the notes is something like this paper, I don't know, add it to your intro or um, look at it later or add to your presentation or a question mark if I, if I don't understand it that well. Here are some other titles that you might want to include depending, like I said, on your, on your research and what you're looking for. Sample size. Um, this is useful because let's say you've read 50 papers and all the sample sizes are 100. It goes to show you that actually 100 is a number that's um, accepted in the field as a sample size. So your research should also have 100 um, participants. Data analysis, what kind of analysis they did. Um, again, this is important because you need to know what kind of analysis is accepted in your field. So if everyone's doing ANOVA t-tests, you can do an ANOVA test. Um, if everyone's doing a different kind of test, you can do that. It just kind of helps you think about um, what the accepted uh, kind of structure is in your field. Um, and then you can kind of go on ethics limitations. There's so much that you, you really have no limits as to what you want to add to this. Try to keep it short and sweet. You don't want to spend too long um, kind of adding to your Excel file. But what you can do is when you come to write in a year's time, six months time, two years time, you can just go control find search for this word that I remember that I, I read somewhere, and you'll find it exactly where it is. And it's just a nice way of kind of managing your literature. Your supervisor will be very impressed, especially if you do this as well.